My previous video explained the mechanics of the Euro dollar futures contract, which references the 90 day LIBOR interest rate. Once we understand the mechanics, then it's not difficult then to understand why, if we have a plan to borrow money in the future, that our hedge trade is to take a short position in the Euro dollar contracts. On the other hand, if we have a plan to lend or to invest in the future and we want to hedge our interest rate exposure, that the hedging trade there is to take a long position in the Euro dollar futures contract. The first scenario concerns a hypothetical where we have a plan to borrow $10 million in the future. And I'm not going to be specific about how many days in the future we know we're going to borrow. Let's just denote that with a T. Could be we know we're going to borrow in 10 days, 30 days, 120 days. We're going to borrow $10 million. And when we borrow, we know we're going to borrow for three months or 90 days. You'll recall the underlying reference on the Euro dollar futures contract is 90 day LIBOR. I'm also going to assume that the 90 day LIBOR, LIBOR currently is 3%. That's higher than what it actually is right now, but I like our round numbers. So that's what we would call a zero or a spot rate, meaning if we were borrowing the $10 million today for three months, we would expect to pay the spot rate of 3%. But that's not our situation. Our situation is that we know we go, we're going to borrow T days into the future. And that is exactly what the Euro dollar futures contract is for. It allows us to effectively lock in this rate, although it's locking it in by adding the hedge instrument as an additional position. We're still going to borrow in the future at the then prevailing 90 day LIBOR. So, our concern here, our risk is that we are, after all, in a rising interest rate environment. Our concern is that in the meantime, before we actually do the borrowing, LIBOR is going to increase. That's our exposure. And so we would hedge that by taking a short position in Euro dollar contracts. And you may recall from my previous video that the part of the specification of that standardized futures contract is that it references a notional amount of $1 million per contract. So that's the principal and the loan are really the notional that is referenced. So we're going to borrow 10 million. We divide that by 1 million to get the number of contracts. And because we're borrowing, we short. And I so I have uh, indicated that with a negative 10. The hedge here is to short 10 contracts. 1 million times 10 is the 10 million. That'll give us the hedge. And to illustrate why that works, we start here today at 3% where LIBOR is three, LIBOR, uh, LIBOR, uh, the spot rate of LIBOR is 3%. And the associated futures quote, as I explained in the previous video, would be 97, right? 100 minus 3 is 97. We look at these futures quotes. These are analogous to the bond prices that move in inverse relationship with the rates. So today the futures quote is 97. And then let's just imagine going forward T days in time to the time that we are going to borrow for three months, 10 days, 30 days, 60 days, whatever we go forward in time. And let's just say our fears, quote unquote, are realized with a higher 90 day LIBOR. It increases to 3.6%, let's say, T days into the future. Well, we still do our borrowing and uh, our borrowing cost here is going to be 90000 I've indicated as a negative because that's a uh, cost to us. And it's just the 3% times the $10 million that we're borrowing multiplied by 0.25 because, again, it's borrowing over uh, 90 days, which is one-fourth of a year. So our borrowing cost did go up. However, we hedged with the Eurodollar futures contract. And the quote, because there's an inverse relationship here at settlement for the futures contract, you can see drops to 96.4. That means as a short position on this contract, we gained or profited. Why is it 15,000? Well, the easiest thing to do there is just remember what I said in the last video, and that is the contracts are designed such that there's a $25 
loss or gain per one basis point change in the rate. So in this case, you notice we went 3% up to 3.6%, so that's 60 basis points times $25 per contract, and we shorted 10 contracts, 15,000. The rate went up, the quote price, the rate went up, the quote price goes down as a short we profit on the futures contract $15,000. That's inflow to us, so it's a positive. So our net borrowing cost, including the hedge, is $75,000. And you can see if we divide that into the 10 million here and multiply by four to annualize it or convert it into per annum terms, we're con converting a 90-day loan into per annum terms, we get the 3% exactly what the spot rate was when we had when we took out the hedge. And so this is the meaning of locking in the rate effectively at 3%, oftentimes confusing to new learners because they don't realize that we're still borrowing, but we've added the hedge trade. So we look at it, locking in is really the fact that the net cost is going to be unchanged. And we can see this by, let me just take another example and assume that on rather than our fears being realized, LIBOR actually decreases, which if we had known that in advance that LIBOR would increase, we wouldn't have needed to do the hedge trade. Let's just say LIBOR dramatically dropped to 2%. Then our actual borrowing cost when we get in the future would only be 50,000. However, we took out the hedge and notice this time, if the rate, if LIBOR drops, we're short, we end up losing on the hedge trade. And notice here, the net is still 75,000 and borrowing costs are 3%. So regardless of what happens, and I'm abstracting some of the frictions and basis here that make this imperfect, but here in this simple example, we're gonna have a net borrowing cost of 3% we've uh, on a net basis locked in in the beginning. Okay, so the only other example here I have is actually whole 6.3 in this chapter six. And now as opposed to a plan or intention to borrow in the future, instead we're, we have a plan to lend some number of T days in the future. And this time we're gonna lend $100 million. We must be flush. Well, we know that's going to uh, require 100 euro dollar contracts for us. And in Hull's example, the current 90 day spot rate is 3.5%. That of course means that 100 minus 3.5, that means the futures quote is 96.5. Our plan is to lend $100 million. And so our risk then is the opposite of when we were borrowing. Our risk here is that the interest rate would actually go down because we would then be lending at a then prevailing lower rate. So Hull here illustrates the realization of that risk. A current 90-day spot LIBOR of 3.5% dropping to 2.6, which is the lender is an exposure to us. So what we have here is I have borrowing costs, but I really should have interest uh, earned Instead, I just copy that over, interest earned. If we get to the realization of 2.6%, then the interest earned on this 100 million will be 650,000. However, because we took a long position in 100 contracts, when the rate dropped, the futures quote increased and we profited $25 per basis point per contract. Our profit on the futures quote, on the futures contract is 225,000, meaning our net gain here is 875, which if divided into the principal is 3.5%. You can see that's the current spot right here. So the gain on the futures quote shielded us or hedged us against the drop in the LIBOR rate. Similarly, if instead the 90-day LIBOR between now and when we lend actually uh, increases to 
then you can see the interest earned on our loan goes up. So that's favorable to us on the underlying to a million. However, in terms of that hedge trade, the futures quote price goes down and we lose a 125,000. So the hedge works against us here, but achieves net interest earned of 875 or 3.5%. You can see here we locked in as the lender. Our hedge here is to take a long position in these Euro dollar futures contracts. So you can access the spreadsheet if you'd like to just uh, try these numbers a little more. I think uh, a little bit of playing around with this and you master the dynamics of the uh, Euro dollar futures contract. If this video is helpful, um, please subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.